a routine Soyuz launch to the ISS, just revealed a major problem. Russia's only active crewed launch pad at Baikonur suffered unexpected structural damage during liftoff. In this video, we break down exactly what failed, why it matters right now, and how this surprising incident could reshape Russia's human spaceflight plans. The key point is simple, the Soyuz MS-28 mission reached the ISS successfully, but the launch pad it lifted off from did not. After the rocket cleared the tower, engineers at Baikonur Cosmodrome discovered that the force and heat of the ignition had damaged several components of the pad. This included parts of the support structure, access systems, and elements used to stabilize the rocket before liftoff. These systems allow crews and technicians to reach the spacecraft during pre-launch checks, and they are designed to retract safely before ignition. According to the inspection team, the damage was located in areas responsible for holding and servicing the rocket before launch. These components were exposed to intense exhaust and vibration, exceeding their operating limits. While the exact technical cause is still under investigation, Analysts noted that older mechanical systems can become more vulnerable when maintenance cycles stretch over time. Even with the pad partially compromised, the rocket itself performed nominally, and the crew arrived safely at the International Space Station. However, the ground infrastructure paid the price. Roscosmos confirmed that multiple elements of the pad require repair and that assessments are underway to determine the full extent. This matters because Baikonur's site is the only pad currently certified for Russia's crewed ISS launches. When a mission depends on a single platform, any unexpected failure instantly becomes a strategic challenge. This first section lays out the facts. The launch succeeded, but the pad did not. And that's the real story behind the headlines. The critical point here is that Russia temporarily lost its only active path for sending humans to orbit. Analysts immediately highlighted the significance. Since the early 1960s, Russia has consistently maintained a man launch capability. But with this pad out of service, that continuity is suddenly at risk. This single pad dependency is unusual in modern space operations. Most agencies or commercial providers diversify launch infrastructure to avoid interruptions. In Russia's case, older pads that once supported crewed missions have been retired or reconfigured. As a result, Baikonur's site became the sole gateway for transporting cosmonauts and astronauts aboard a Soyuz to the ISS. The timing amplifies the impact. Crew rotations aboard the International Space Station operate on strict schedules. Crews already in orbit expect relief on fixed timelines, and returning teams rely on carefully balanced handovers. Cargo missions also depend on predictable launch planning to keep food, experiments, and equipment flowing. Even a short delay can disrupt long-term planning for both Russian modules and shared station operations. Commentary from specialists emphasized an additional concern, future missions. Russia has been preparing early steps toward its planned Russian orbital station, which would eventually follow the ISS era. But losing access to its only operational crewed pad introduces uncertainty into that roadmap. A delay in repairing or replacing this infrastructure could shift timelines, derail testing sequences, or require costly modifications elsewhere. This incident also brought renewed attention to aging infrastructure. Many systems at Baikonur date back decades and are under continuous strain from frequent launches. When a single technical failure can pause human launch activity, the vulnerability becomes clear. The focus now shifts to recovery, and the next steps tell us a lot about Russia's options. Roscosmos stated that replacement parts and repair equipment are available, and that restoration work will begin quickly. However, specialists who examined the available visuals and early statements estimate that repairs could take anywhere from several days to several weeks, depending on what deeper inspections uncover. Launch pads are complex systems. They include stabilization arms, fueling interfaces, structural towers, access platforms, flame trenches, and dozens of mechanical components that have to function perfectly together. When even one major element fails or collapses, engineers must verify whether adjacent components suffered stress or deformation. That process alone can take time, and rushing it risks further problems. 
One proposed option is to modernize or certify an alternate pad at Baikonur, but that is not straightforward. Adapting a pad for crude use requires safety systems, emergency escape provisions, fueling compatibility, and extensive testing. Specialists noted that modifying a second pad could take months or even longer. Another possibility is adjusting mission schedules. Since NASA uses Crew Dragon for its launches, American access to the ISS is not directly affected, but Russia's own rotation plans may need temporary adjustment. Crews currently aboard the station are scheduled to return soon, so Russia will have to balance station operations carefully while repairs progress. The long-term lesson is clear. Relying on a single pad exposes a hidden structural weakness. This section highlights how Russia must either repair rapidly, invest in additional infrastructure, or rethink its crewed mission strategy. The path forward will shape its role in human spaceflight over the coming years. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this deep dive into a surprising moment in modern spaceflight, make sure to like, share, and subscribe for more exciting coverage of the latest breakthroughs, missions, and space discoveries.